Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Sally Pinto and I'm from the Yonkers North, neighborhood naturally occurring retirement community. We launched back in January of 2020 and we're here to serve seniors 60 plus in Northeast Yonkers. We have lots of fun programs and activities and we also have a lot of resources for you as well. Our programs include meditation chair yoga, uh, body mind fitness, bingo, and any other programs that you might be interested in, like arts and gardening. We have our resource specialist, Alexa Smith, who can help you with finding services and activities out there for you, as well as our nurse, Barbara Simone, who can help answer your health-related questions. We're here for you, we're here for our community, and we look forward to seeing you in our programs. Enjoy. Hello, everybody. I'm Alexa Smith, the resource specialist with the Yonkers Mark. I'm here to help with application assistance, referrals for home delivered meals, and transportation services will be coming soon. We also um, offer Zoom activities and Zoom programs. And if you have any other questions or concerns, I'm here to help. Thank you so much and enjoy the program. Welcome, I'm Barbara Simone, registered nurse. I recently retired from Westchester County's health department as a public health nurse. I am now here to try to assist you with any medical, or preventive care issues. Enjoy this program, and I'm looking forward to working with you. All my good friends, uh, I, I feel at home here. Like you said, where uh, we've been able to gather together every Wednesday and, and in all these communities, that, that's really beautiful. And as I always say, it's a gift for me to be here with you. A um, little bit of the basic reminders and then a little bit of an overview on uh, particularly what we'll do today. Uh, similar format if you've been with us before. But I heard some chatter before the start of the class um, about people learning that if you, you know, you can't do a push up, maybe there's an isometric hold you could do. Adaptability is one of those big keys for me in all of exercise, uh, particularly for our class here uh, and for what we're trying to accomplish. But generally, for me, my workout and my approach to exercise is adaptable on a day to day basis. Have I been super stressed? Is my, has my sleep not been great? Has my diet not been great? Um, when those things are happening, then you might not be able to do as much. And so you adapt to something less. You listen to your, what your body's telling you. And some days you may be ready to do that push up. Some days you, you know, you may not. And so adaptability is a big key. I'll try to give you the different things you could do, but second big, uh, sort of theme for me, be gentle with yourself, listen to what your body's telling you and be ready to push a little bit harder when it's inviting you to but not when it's not. When your body is saying, hey, slow down, I'm not ready yet. It's best to sort of listen to our body um, at those moments. How do we keep those two things, adaptability and gentleness, uh, sort of in mind? Well, the first one is by practicing mindfulness throughout this workout. Uh, I hope more and more as you've done this and been with us that you see the mindfulness sort of official portion at the end is, is not the only time in which we're practicing the mindfulness. All throughout the workout, when we're doing moves, at first, I would invite you to pay attention if we're doing an exercise with a leg or something, what's going on in that leg? How does that quadricep muscle feel? But then expand out, how do my knee and my hip feel? What's going on in my toe and my head as I'm doing that leg exercise? So expanding our mindfulness throughout. And one easy way to do that is to also be attentive to what's going on in your breath. So if we're doing a squat, what does your breath feel like in the middle of that squat once you're comfortable with the squat pattern? Uh, listening to your breathing, remembering to breathe in deeply through your nose um, is a great start to a good breathing practice and good breathing habits. Uh, and the final one, as always, is smile. Literally just turning that smile on releases you know, endorphins and all the good biochemical stuff we know happens when we flip that smile on. Try to sort of do that throughout and I'll be reminding you. But I also heard some people uh, sort of bringing some, some aches and pains uh, to the group today. Um, you know, people uh, dealing with allergies and, and stressful times in work. And we've all sort of been cooped up. It's, you know, over a year now. Um, I know that for me, I'm bringing in, I'm just gonna be honest, I felt more comfortable being a little bit more vulnerable in this group recently. I'm bringing in a little bit of anxiety. I've been sort of cooped up in my house and 
there was something of a some tension uh, um, with the people I live with, a little bit of a quarrel, which is okay, those things happen. But then I tend to carry that around as anxiety for a few days after that, worrying that something's going to happen. And so I'm excited to be here with you all because I know that I'm going to bring my best today, as I always do. My best today might not be my best that I always do, but I know and trust that when you guys bring your best, and I bring my best at the start of the session, which I've already felt the beautiful greeting. By the end, my best that I could offer you will be better than the best I walked in with. So whatever you're bringing today, I hope you realize that this is a safe space to work through some of that. This is a comfortable space to work through some of that. And the reason I just bring this up is because part of what we're going to do today in our meditation is just something I learned recently. I was listening to uh, an expert on um, a, a counselor who works with uh, trauma, vic victims of trauma, PTSD uh, patients and, and things like that. Very much, very often he would work with people who had been in war, who had been fleeing from genocide, um, who maybe grew up in abusive situations or anything like that. And one of the exercises he has them do is to a, a, a stretch that involves looking over their shoulder. And we're gonna do that twice in this workout. I just bring that up to say, I'm bringing in a little bit of, of uh, heavier emotions today. Uh, I, I think that's good to sort of be open with that and to share that and then to say, we're gonna work through that together. So whatever you're bringing here today, if you're bringing joy and happiness and excitement, great, I need that, send that to me over the internet. But if you're bringing something a little heavier, that's okay too, we're gonna to work through that. Uh, and if we all bring what we're bringing, we're gonna have something beautiful here by the end. So our uh, workout will look pretty similar to what we normally do. Start off with a warm up. We'll do a few sets of uh, seated Tabata uh, exercises from the chair, a couple sets of standing. And today we're gonna to focus nice and slowly in a good chunk of time, just on a good breathing meditation. I was so touched that I hear some of the poems are, are, are enjoyed. I'll definitely bring a poem next time I'm here. Uh, and try to keep bringing different mindfulness uh, methods. But I thought to touch back to just our basic, basic breathing meditation today would be great. So we're gonna get into our warm up, uh, starting off nice and simple, just going from the top of the body down to the bottom, uh, gently stretching just through the different parts of our body that might be tight at this point. So we're gonna start sort of with our neck. And I just want you to bring your right ear down to your right shoulder. Nice gentle stretch, just holding that there. Remembering good posture at this point, good breath at this point, and big smile. And then bring your left ear over to your left shoulder. And this is a good time to start doing some of those body scans body awareness. Maybe it feels tense or, or tight right in here for you, but I noticed that when I bring my left ear over to my left shoulder, I get a little tightness in my back, something at lower back, something to pay attention to. Come back to the center, and now I want you to just look down at the floor, gentle stretch, continuing to breathe in deeply, allowing your stomach to expand on the in-breath. And so I notice what's going on. Oh, as my neck is stretching, I feel a tightness here or there. Something to be aware of, something to attend to. And then returning to center, and this time looking up. Just gently let your head fall back a little bit, maintaining good posture, breathing, and big smiles. And then return to center. And we're gonna do a couple gentle neck circles. So just pick one direction to go in and we'll go in that direction and then we'll reverse that direction. So just start off some gentle neck circles. I'm moving counterclockwise. Nice and gentle, not going too big yet. Wherever your body is inviting you to be in your range of motion. Good, and then in pause, and we'll go the other way. And 
Good, and pause there. Now we're gonna move down, start working out our shoulders. We're gonna do tight arm circles. So arms out to the side, my palms are facing down for this one, and we're gonna do gentle, tight, forward arm circles. Not big ones yet, nice and tight. Try to imagine and feel the motion coming from that shoulder joint, working through the range of the shoulder joint with a tight circle. Palms facing down on this one. Good posture, feet flat on the floor. Good breath, big smiles. Good, shake that out a little bit. Always good to just do a little shake out in between exercises. Reset your body, be able to pay attention to what's happening next. This time we're gonna put our palms up towards the sky. So now my palms are facing up and I'm gonna do backward tight arm circles. Just getting warmed up, listening to what our body's telling us and take a pause on that. We're gonna continue working down the body, trying to stretch out our sides. So we're gonna reach our arms overhead. Uh, if you could sort of pray them together, sort of a prayer position, that would be great. But if you need to just grab them or if, if you're not flexible enough to get up there, uh, but just have your palms wherever they are, that's all fine. Arms overhead is the big one, trying to pray. And we're just gonna reach over to our right side. Nice stretch through here. Should feel good stretch through your side. Trying to keep good posture and trying to keep your biceps close to your ear. That's a yoga sort of uh, cue that I, I love and learn a lot. When our arms are overhead in this kind of movement, bringing the biceps to the ear will help get our shoulders in good shape. But we'll hold that gently wherever you can. If you gotta be out here, that's fine. And we'll gently return to center, shaking things out, deep breath, starting to feel like we're moving, can feel the blood moving around our body, oxygen moving around our body, already starting to feel better. We're gonna go to this side now. So again, wherever you could get your arms up overhead, but if you can get them to this prayer position with me, that'd be great. We're gonna lean over to our left side. We don't wanna be slumping over. So one of the uh, temptations I think is to sort of slump over this way on this stretch. Good upright through your core. If that means the stretch is a little bit less, that's fine. That's fine with me, but nice and upright through our core, reaching over to our left side. I'm not even into too deep of a stretch yet. I'm still warming up. I know you guys are too. And we'll pause on that. Excellent work. Uh, we're gonna go down through uh, sort of into our hip areas now. We're gonna do a little hamstring stretch. So we're gonna put our foot out um, and our toes gonna be pointing up to the sky. So I'll show you that from the side in a moment, but foot out, sitting towards the front of your chair, gentle lean over into a hamstring stretch. So on the underside of your upper leg and even down into your calves. My toe is pointing up to the sky I'll show you from the side in a moment, but you guys just stay here, feeling a nice gentle stretch in your right hamstring, still keeping uh, good posture. So stay in that guys, just to show you what I'm doing from this side, right foot out, left foot flat on the ground, toe pointing up to the sky, gentle lean, good posture still, good flat back, core's tight, Nice stretch in the hamstring of the right leg and calf. Hold that for a few more seconds. Good, and return to center. And this time we'll go into our left leg. So again, left foot out, toe pointing up to the sky, gentle bend over at the waist. Good stretch in the hamstring. Good stretch even into the calf. To show you that again from the side, you guys stay there. Right foot flat on the ground, heel on the floor, toe pointing up as it can, stretching the hamstring, good posture. And of course, good breathing throughout.
Hold that for a few more seconds. And then we'll breathe. Return to center. And here's our last warm up um, that I just picked up yesterday. It's a little bit of a stretch and a little bit of a start to a meditation. And I was listening to this, uh, you know, counselor and expert in, in, in who works with trauma, uh, people who are experiencing trauma and PTSD. And one of the first movements he'll have people do is a look over their shoulder to what's behind them. And I'll explain sort of physically what's going on there in a moment in terms of our muscles. But I just thought the reason was beautiful why uh, he did this is that in people who have experienced some sort of trauma and even in their children, because it gets passed along generation to generation, there's a physical sense that there's some impending danger behind us. Again, people who have been in war or have uh, fled from, from genocide, these are the people this guy works with. There's some fear that maybe there's something behind them. And so if we become aware of where we are and we're in a safe, comfortable space where we feel trust and welcomed, to do a stretch of looking over our shoulder and realizing there's nothing dangerous coming right now in this space is a way to both stretch and to let go of some of that anxiety we might be holding. So we're going to do a little bit of that. Certainly, I hope um, that the kinds of trauma we might be dealing with are, are less than the ones I listed, but this is an exercise that will be good for all of us. So sitting upright in our chair, just become aware of how are you feeling? What do you bring here today? And then we're going to do a stretch by reaching across our body, staying upright and alert, and looking over our left shoulder, trying to see what's behind us. Try not to turn too much from the legs, the upper body looking over your shoulder. And then returning to center, we'll do that same thing on the right, realizing that we're in a safe space and letting our body realize that we're ready to let go of whatever we're carrying with us today. So now looking over your right side. and then returning to center. So now hopefully your body begins to know what I hope your mind and your heart knows, that right now we're in a safe space together, we're uh, working out, we're giving ourselves a beautiful gift, and that you're able to let go of whatever tension, stress, fear, anxiety you might be carrying with us, and that there's nothing dangerous coming for us uh, right here and now. So with that spirit, we're gonna move into uh, our exercise. We're gonna start off with a two sets of seated Tabata. The tab Tabata method, 40 seconds of work, 20 seconds of rest, just that two to one ratio, very simple. We're gonna have five exercises. We're gonna start with a seated march, okay? One of my favorites, opposite leg, opposite arm, getting the body a little bit more warmed up. We're gonna then move into alternating single leg kick. So not flutter kick, but a good squeeze in the quad with each leg at a time. And we're gonna do a fun one. I remember people really enjoying the dragon dance. That's a movement from Qigong. Uh, we're gonna do another Qigong movement. We're gonna go out hunting together. We're gonna to do a bow and arrow. Pull, feel the tension through your body, and then pull that way. I'll give you a couple variations on that, but we'll do bow and arrow pulls going both ways. Uh, then we're going to do a calf raise. I've talked about the calves before, just coming up onto our toes. And then we're going to do sort of a, um, a, a movement that will start off planned and become more random as we do it. We're going to reach for grocery cans across our body, reach for those high grocery cans or whatever we imagine grabbing. That'll be our fifth movement. We're going to add some randomness to that as we go, but I'll explain that when we get there. For right now, um, we're going to jump into our first set of Tabata. I'll give you the exercise, 40 seconds of work, 20 seconds of rest, listening to our body, good breathing, good mindfulness, pushing ourselves as we're invited to push ourselves. So we'll start off with a good march, good posture. We'll start off in three, two, one, going for 40 seconds. 
Getting the elbow high, getting the knee off the ground, feeling the body warming up. And feel this out as you do it. There's lots of ways you could do these uh, exercises. Maybe you get a little bit higher with the punches. Maybe that feels good today. Listen to your body. Where is it trying to be stretched? Where does it need to be warmed up? Where does it need some love? We'll pause on that in three, two, one. Excellent guys, 20 seconds of rest. Simple next movement, but we want a good squeeze, a good what's called isometric hold at the top. So we're gonna kick up with one leg, toe point in the sky, good squeeze in the quad, and we'll alternate legs throughout. And we'll start into that in three, two, one. Good squeeze with the right leg, good squeeze with the left. Going at your best pace. This is not a quick movement. Try to get to full extension, feeling a good squeeze in that big quadricep muscle. Just to show you from the side, you guys keep going, but good posture, kicking out. Good extension, feeling this muscle squeeze. Good extension, feeling this muscle squeeze. And we'll pause on that in three, two, one. Excellent, guys. Uh, I'm gonna stay here because uh, I think it'll be best to show you the next move, calf raise. My, I shift my feet in a little bit tighter, closer to me, just so I could get a full range of motion. We wanna come from, up our, from our heels up onto our toes. Um, almost like if you've seen a good ballerina, uh, people who do ballet, able to get up onto our toes. We're gonna try to do that here. So good squeeze in the calf and we'll start in three, two, one. So I know I've said this before, but I just find it fascinating in some of the uh, scientific uh, literature on sort of exercise science and things like that, the calf muscles get referred to sometimes as sort of a second heart. Heart pushes blood through the body. Some of the muscles have to help squeeze it back up as it goes. And so good strong calf and calves and ankles correlated to some better heart health in life is what I've read. And we'll finish on calf raises in three, two, one. Excellent. Returning back to center. We're gonna call these cross body reaches. The basic one is, and stick with this if you want, we're gonna reach out to those grocery cans that we need to reach. And we're just gonna do that for uh, 40 seconds or so. But as you go, if this starts feeling good, imagine what else you might wanna reach for overhead. In fact, imagine just sort of a big circle. Maybe you reach behind you. Maybe you reach out in front. So as you go, just the first one is just across the body, just like that. But as you go and it becomes more warm and you're feeling comfortable and feeling with it and it's feeling fun, then maybe you reach out over there, reach out over there, reach out in front. Reaching to a high place in a full circle is the goal. We'll start off with the basic version in three, two, one. So just reaching across the body, pretending we're grabbing some of those grocery cans or whatever it might be up high, roll of paper towels, book off the shelf, off the library shelf, whatever it might be. But as we go, you could have a little bit more fun with it. Reach out there. Reach more out in front, something out in front of you. Reach and touch. Stretch, reach, touch, keeping good posture, good breath throughout. Reach behind you a little bit. Can you grab something behind you? And we'll pause there in three, two, one. Excellent guys, that's a good progression. The marches start to get the blood flowing around the body. By the end, we're moving our full body in ways that are applicable to our life. How many times do we need to reach something? Maybe we got something in our hands and you still need to reach it. That's all real life living and getting mobile and loose and comfortable in those planes, in that big circle plane, 
hugely helpful. So as always guys, taking a big uh, drink of water when you need it. Um, sometimes I'm afraid of repeating myself as a teacher. I don't know who's been here all the time, but if you haven't been here before, just a reminder, if you need a little extra weight at home and you got some little tiny water bottles, moving with these would be a great way to add some weight to your workout. Um, even a bag of rice or something like that I've seen people do. But we will move into our second set of seated tapita in just a few moments here. And remember, we got march, single leg kicks, that bow and arrow move. Oh, did I skip that last time? I did skip that last time. I apologize. I knew, I knew that went a little fast. Let's do a quick set of bow and arrow to get used to it, and then we'll move into our second tabata. Sorry about that. So uh, a couple of different ways to do it. Just imagine you're pulling a bow and arrow. One of the classic Qigong positions is to have um, our two fingers lead that. So two fingers out there, or you could imagine pushing the energy away. But what you wanna do is stay at the center and push from the center of your body and imagine there's tension there. And so let's just do that and try to get used to that movement. Again, I apologize. I know I left it out of the first set. Let's just get used to that movement and we'll work it into the second set. So reaching out to the side, good, pa good pull, good pause, feel the energy through your body. Pulling like you're really pulling on something that's heavy, that's got some tension. Feel the strength through your shoulders. Feel your bicep and your back pulling. Same thing over here. Same thing over here. Okay, just get used to that. Don't worry about the time right now. Do it as you go. It's a new movement, so probably best that we just take a little time to get used to it. Good, and then we'll pause there. We'll move in. I'll give you just a few seconds to sort of recover from that set. We'll move into our uh, second set of seated tabata. I'll work in the bow and arrow this time. And don't worry if you enjoyed that, the bow and arrow is gonna come back in our standing set too. So plenty of opportunity to work on our hunting skills today. Uh, but with that, let's move into our second set of seated tabata, starting off with the march. And we'll go in three, two, one. Excellent work out there. Sometimes the screen sort of flashes up where I can see a person doing the march or whatever. Whatever form I see out there looks great. Awesome work, everybody. Thanks for your energy. I already felt it sent to me over, over Zoom. I'm already feeling better, happier, more at ease. And we'll work on this in three, two, one. We'll pause there. 20 seconds of rest. And we're going into single leg kicks, kick next. So alternating with each leg, good squeeze in the quad. Um, and I'll turn to the side at some point to show you what that looks like. And we'll get into our uh, set of single leg kicks in three, two, one. Good squeeze in the quad. Squeeze in the other quad. Now, as you're more comfortable with this and this movement feels pretty simple and you say, oh, I could do this, it doesn't feel too complicated. Now pay attention to the rest of your body. Are you compensating on one leg? So when this right leg goes up, is there a bit of a lean happening the other way to compensate? That's your body saying there's something tight somewhere else as opposed to can I isolate just this movement and not have any movement from my core to compensate for that. So that's a more advanced cue. If you're feeling comfortable and happy with our leg kicks, that's fine. And we'll pause more on that in three, two, one. Excellent. So what I was just saying is, if you're feeling comfortable and wanna expand the mindfulness aspect of this, paying attention to the other parts of your body while you're doing a movement that feels comfortable and that you know well, will teach you a lot about um, where you're tight, where, where you need to loosen up, where you need to become a little stronger, things like that. But our next exercise in just a few seconds will be that bow and arrow. Go at your own pace, but really imagine that there's tension and that you're pulling this thing apart and stretching out your shoulders, 
opening up your shoulders, good bow and arrow form, going in three, two, one. So again, classic Qigong post uh, position is to have the two fingers lead. If you like that, that's good. If you just wanna push the energy away, that's fine too. If you just wanna keep your, uh, your fist closed, that's fine as well. Something like warrior pose maybe if you do yoga but this is particularly from Qigong, if you've done any Qigong in your life. And we'll pause on that in three, two, one. Excellent. Next up, we got calf raised, uh, good squeeze, trying to come up onto the toes, uh, like, like good ballet artists, things like that, um, and be able to get a good squeeze through our calf there. But starting from your heels uh, flat on the floor, and we'll begin that in a few more seconds. Three, two, one. Okay, coming up, on, up onto our toes. Good squeeze with the calf. Excellent work out there all. Good steady breathing throughout, big smiles. We'll pause on that in three, two, one. 20 more seconds and we're gonna reach for those high items. Books on a bookshelf, cans uh, in the grocery aisle, whatever it might be. Starting off with the focus being a cross body um, reach but then as you're feeling more comfortable, reach out, trying to stay from the center. We don't wanna to lean too far over, stay from the center, have this be a mobility exercise. But we'll start in on that, starting basic and expanding as you have fun with it in three, two, one. So reaching across for something high. But as you go, maybe it's out a little bit far in front, farther in front of you, but still across your body. Maybe you reach out to the side, your arm is on, so not cross body anymore, but farther away from you. And now the real, probably hardest version in terms of flexibility, reaching around to grab something behind you. Don't move to that if you're not comfortable. Again, adaptability is a key. You could keep it with that basic movement or you could join me in some of the movements that are a little bit more challenging. We'll pause on that movement in three, two, one. Excellent work guys. Class is flying right along. We're gonna move into our standing. Uh, set. So let me just adjust my camera. Good. Okay. Yep. That gives me decent coverage. You can see my feet. Again, basic is, uh, you know, use the chair as you need the support, but as you're able to step away from it, adaptability. That's the goal here is to give you some independence of movement and some mobility of movement. So for our standing um, exercises, we're gonna start off with squats. So squats will be our first movement. I'll talk through this. Then we're gonna do that bow and arrow move from standing. If you need to stand up uh, with your feet together, that's fine. The sort of better version I'll show you or the more challenging version is to come into this nice wide, what's called horse stance, um, wide squat and to do the bow and arrow from there. We'll talk through that as we go and I'll show you what that looks like. Uh, the next one then is using some support, uh, leg curl, okay? Inside leg curl, if we're able to take our hand away, we'll do that. We'll um, alternate, we'll do the right leg in the first 
uh, actually we'll alternate within the set. So we'll stand behind the chair and go from one leg to the other. And we got leg curl uh, and then we're gonna do punches. So feet at a stagger stance, left foot out front. And we'll do punches from there. And uh, then we're gonna do our balance work. We'll probably just do, I'm just looking at the time. We wanna get to meditation. If we could fit two sets in, we'll do that. But if not, we'll do balance work uh, on both our legs um, to finish this off. I'll keep an eye on the time and make the call on whether we're gonna do one set or two sets, but let's get right into it. Some good squats. Let me just tilt this down, sorry. So good squat, use that chair if you need it, but take your hands away if you can. We'll start into this in three, two, one. Okay, coming down to a good squat, using that chair if you need it. But as you go, if you're able to take a hand away, and then if you're able to take two hands, two hands away, that'd be awesome. We'll work on that for three, two, one, finish on that rep. Good. Excellent guys, 20 seconds rest. Using the chair for balance, if you need it on this, we're gonna do that bow and arrow move. If you can't get into a good held squat, that's fine, stand up straight, do your bow and arrow from there. But if you're able to get into a good wide horse stance, uh, squat stance, and do your bow and arrow from there, that's the sort of more challenging version. I'm already breathing heavy, those squats got me. So let's jump right into this movement in three, two, one. Good squat if you can, I'll start with you. Um, if you're up here, I'll start with you and then I'll go into the squat stance one. Whew. These, these moves are kicking my butt, I'm breathing heavy. I can't even get my words out. Okay, again, if you're able to get down into this position, even better. Work on that for five, three, two, one. Excellent work, guys. 20 seconds of rest. Next up, we got leg curls. So if you need double support, that's fine have it out front, we're gonna go from one leg curl to the other. So we're gonna get both um, legs in on this, using this for support if you need it, but if you're able to get away, that'd be great as well. We'll start in this for 40 seconds and three, two, one. So you should feel a good squeeze in your hamstring. Uh, strengthen the back side of that thigh. And we'll pause in three, two, one. Excellent, next up we got punches. So you could stand square up, feet sort of together facing forward and punch from there. If you've done a little boxing or Tai Chi or anything like that before and you like a stagger stance, that's fine as well. But we're gonna do 40 seconds of good punches. Get into it if you like it. If you've done a little boxing and you wanna sort of dance around your room, that's fine with me. Adaptability, you do what you need. But we're doing basic punches for 40 seconds, starting in three, two, one. Excellent work out there. Maybe working out some aggression on this one. Throwing any of that negative energy back out, away from you, back in the world. It's not gonna bother you anymore. We'll pause on that in three, two, 
one. Excellent work, guys. That feels good to get some of the stress out for me. We're going to fin uh, do some balance. Then I just decided I want to do a little bit more work. I feel like we could uh, fit in a little bit more exercise. So we're going to do a, a double time Tabata set in a moment. Uh, we'll do 2010 breaks instead of 4020. But for right now, we're going to work on our balance. We're going to do uh, a bit of time with the right leg, a bit of time with the left leg. It'll be a little more than 40 seconds, but then we'll work in the next set. So if you need the help from the chair, that's fine. But as you're able to get uh, into a good balance position without that help, that'd be great. So let's start in with our right leg coming up in three, two, one. So if you need the balance from that chair, that's fine. The goal guys is 90, 90. But if all you're getting to today, this is key. If this is all you can get to, that's fine. Work to this today, hold this nice and strong. But if we could get up here, that'd be awesome. And I've told you before, even beyond that, if there's some real pros out there and you could stretch out your leg and hold that for time, that gets challenging for me. You could close your eyes even more so. That's another way to add uh, difficulty to this. But this is plenty difficult for me today. Plenty difficult, I think, for most, most humans out there to work on our balance. And we'll switch from that in three, two, one, we're going right into the left leg. A little bit of a longer set to finish this off, guys, but I wanna work both legs in. Using that chair for balance if you need it, trying to get to 90-90. You know the variations if you're looking for something even more challenging. Pause in three, two, one. So I'm just feeling like we need to get a little bit more exercise in. The squats just really started to feel good to me. We're gonna do squats and that bow and arrow. I'm really liking those today. Uh, I saw some good form out there from just a little bit of what I could see. And then we'll get into our meditation. So a little, a little cherry on the top here. If you need a break, that's fine. Get some water. We'll be in the meditation soon. But what we're gonna do is just 40 seconds of squats. 20 seconds of rest, and then 40 seconds of the bow and arrow to finish things off, and then we'll get into our meditation. So if you're still with me, still looking for that good work, let's get into a good set of squats in three, two, one. Pause on that in three, two, one. Good, we're gonna get that bow and arrow in. I've gotten a lot out of these Qigong movements myself. The sort of dragon dance we did and then this bow and arrow movement. So I'm happy to share this with you all. It's done a lot for me. We'll get into one more set of bow and arrow in a few seconds and then we'll have our Tabata. So again, if you need to stand from up here, that's great. Do the bone move, arrow movement from there, or you could get down to a squat. I'm gonna start here, nice and wide, in three, two, one. Feeling that strength across your whole upper body, your shoulder, your chest, your back. You're strong as a warrior. And I feel your strength coming through even this screen. We'll pause on that in three, two, one. Excellent work, guys. Transition yourself to sitting down in the chair. Grab a little drink of water if you need to. Trying to consciously slow your breathing down. We're bringing ourselves, listening to our body, but trying to encourage our body now into a space of rest to be able to transition from work to rest is actually really challenging, is for me at least. If I've been working out for a while or if I 
had a stressful day at work to come home and immediately go, oh, now I'm relaxed. That's tough, right? So this is a space to practice that. We've given a gift to our body. Working out's a gift. But now our body is saying, oh, now I'm excited. And now to say, okay, it's good we got excited. Let's ease into some rest. So guys, we're gonna just do a, some basic breathing meditation along with a body scan. I'll invite you to sort of go up through your body and to, to imagine those parts relaxing, healing, easing tension. But we'll start off with that look over the shoulder. Remembering that our bodies sometimes know things that our minds don't, or our mind knows something that our body doesn't. And so our body might be in a state of stress, in a state of fear, even though our minds know there's nothing to be afraid of. And so literally, this the act of looking over your shoulder and seeing that there's no danger there is a way of telling your body, it's okay, we can relax. And so that's what we're gonna do here. So we'll start off with that look over the shoulder meditation. Then I'll walk you through some basic breathing meditation. And that's where we'll end today. Again, if you have a preferred method that you like to do and what I'm saying isn't working with you, this is space for you and whatever your body and mind and heart needs right now. So I would just invite you to find a relaxed, peaceful position, feet flat on the floor, hands on our knees. We don't like to have limbs crossed over or anything sort of in a way that's gonna make our body feel pinched or unnatural. Finding a good natural but upright and alert position. And just become aware of what your body's feeling right now. Energized, sleepy, sore, anxious, down, sleepy, whatever it might be. Just become aware of what your body is bringing to this moment that your mind might not even know why it's there. Like I said, I carried in some anxiety today. I know the problem's over, but my body is still telling me to be anxious. And that's okay, it's a gift my body's trying to say to me is I'm protecting you. And my mind is gonna say to my body, it's okay, you can take a break. And so whatever you're carrying in with you today, we're gonna to start just by doing that look over our shoulder. Simple, but it's letting our body know it's okay to relax. So whenever you're ready, just look over that left shoulder again and stretch and breathe there for a few moments on your own. Excellent guys, and when you're ready, let's do that to the right side. Just a gentle look, a little bit of a stretch in the shoulder, a little bit of a stretch in the midsection. Breathing slowly and gently throughout. And then return to center. And hopefully your body now no, knows now that this is a place to relax. And to get even more into that relaxation, I'd invite you to become aware of your breathing. Take a deep breath in through your nose. Allow your stomach to expand on the in-breath. Hold that breath for a few moments. And then exhale slowly. And 
I'd invite you to slow your breath down with each inhale, with each pause, with each exhale. With each breath, your body knows that it can relax, that it could rest, that this is a space in which to be comfortable. With each breath you take, your mind becomes clear and focused. Breathing in peace and calm and relaxation. Breathing out fear, worry, and anxiety. And then I'd invite you to bring your awareness to your feet. And taking a deep breath in, I invite you just to clench your toes and clench your feet gently. But hold that breath and that tension just for a moment. And then when you're ready, calmly exhale and release the tension in your feet. Feel that, feel that calm entering into your feet and your toes. Feel that calm healing relaxation moving up through your calf. Releasing any tension in your knees. Feel that calm working its way up through your thighs and into your hips. Breathing in peace, calm, and relaxation. Breathing out fear, worry, and anxiety. Your lower body now, especially, is feeling calm and relaxed. And then I would invite you to bring your awareness to your hands. And taking a deep breath in through your nose. I'd invite you to hold that breath in and clench your fists at the same time. Hold that breath in and that tension for a moment. And then with a good slow exhale, release the tension in your hands. I like to open my palms up and exhale out of your mouth. And feel that calm entering in through your hands, washing over your forearms, your biceps, your shoulders, down into your midsection, and up through your neck, your ears, your eyes, and the top of your head. Rest here. I like to rest with my palms up. It's a sign of openness and generosity and reception. Rest here as long as you'd like.
But if you're ready to return to full awareness with me, you can come back to full awareness in this space. You can gently start to loosen your body up, shake some things out. And then just take note of how you're feeling now. I know I start off saying I was carrying in some stuff. I thank you for hearing that and welcoming me here. And I said that if we bring all of what we're bringing by the end, we'll all be a little bit better. And I'm feeling better now. I'm ready for my day. That's a gift for me. So thank you for allowing me to be here. Hi, everyone. This is Z from Yonkers Public Library. Thanks so much to Sally Pinto and Alexis and Barbara from Nork. Thank you to our community partners, WJCS, the City of Yonkers Office for the Aging, Westchester County Legislator Ruth Walter, Friends of Crestwood Library, and Yonkers Public Library for making this phenomenal partnership. And we thank each and every one of you for being part of our wellness community. Be well, stay well.